Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Singularity Net Archive GitHub repository uh, from where um, we run our archive, Git books, and where we manage um, our project board. Our project board is under projects here, and uh, here's the project board under the Singularity Net Archive. Um, just uh, admit. Okay. Okay, the, the way that we um, run the meeting is through um, a project board. Um, actually, I've even got to make, do we have, all oh, right, I know what's going to happen. We've got to activate the meeting <laughs> um, issue. So let's do that now. Okay, so it's probably not in no status. Okay, so in progress. That should now appear here, hopefully. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. Right, this is the meeting issue for the meeting of Wednesday, the 21st of February. Welcome, everyone to the Singularity Net project management meeting. Um, our archive contains a history of the activity of the Singularity Net Ambassador Program. And our goal is to provide a, a collaborative platform for the archive community to share knowledge, ideas, and best practices. And we welcome contributions from anyone. Um, so our process is to um, um, do a stand up from the the project board, and you have some updates, Vanessa, on the process that you we're going to put action items into the meeting summary. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and see how it works. Okay, and I'll take any notes in any any other notes, more informal notes. I'll maybe put in the issues then. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Should we get started? Then the um they're in. Is this order okay? Uh, or do you want them reordered? I'll, put, I'll stick with this. No, nah, it looks fine. Yeah. Okay, let's kick off with the governance git book. Um, okay, but, I've added an update at the end. So trying to, I'm trying to do that, actually, to update the issues prior to the meeting so we can just look at them and there's less typing. Yeah. But, yeah, so as people know we met with the supervisory council a while back now um end of january and we're looking at doing some documentation on the um decentralization yeah. blueprint that they're working on and we also talked about like what other things belong in the governance skip book because the idea is that's where this would go so just for q1 i'm suggesting that it's basically the stuff that's currently in the ambassador's git book about the um, governance framework that mm. Felix kind of spearheaded in 2023. Um, subject to agreement from the supervisory council, their blueprint stuff. And I'd also like to include something on the um, governance token experiment that again, Felix kind of spearheaded in 2023. I think that is, an interesting governance experiment that should pro probably be documented. So I'm suggesting I probably need to chat to Felix about what there is to include in documentation of that. But we could also, all of us, have a look round for mm. other governance experiments that have been happening in the wider SNET community and maybe sort of share with people that if you've been doing anything, we could document it on the governance Git book. I'm seeing it as trying to aiming to become a bit of a repository for stuff about governance across SNAM. Does that sound like what it should be? I'd like to gather some opinion on that. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? On any uh, For the governance skip book, should we have, um, should that represent a broad range of thinking on governance across um, singularity in that? What do people think? Well, maybe, yes. um, there's a difference, I would say, between what's being done internally and what's being done publicly. Yeah. 
That being said, something to consider here, for example, would be the efforts um, Strategy Guild is doing on uh, decision making software. Uh, they're, they're basically doing a, yeah, how to put it, an analysis of, of a whole bunch of different uh, tools for on chain governance. So did its power. You meet yourself. That every year they would send down oh, oh, um, admin power in the call, so I can't to ensure hell and its sinners. Who's that? Them. But Lilith's hope remains. Um, yeah, that's what it was, uh, Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay, so the you were talking about strategy guild, Peter. Yes. Uh, I, I think the, the easiest is to I can think I can grab a link from their channel. Um, mm, mm, quick second. Would that would that be? Did you see that as internal or more general thinking? Um, I mean, sorry. Oh, no, feel free. No, I was just going to say, I'd question, is that a governance experiment? They're just researching decision-making tools, aren't they? Yeah, true. Yeah, no, as such, it's not an experiment. Uh, true. I suppose they don't. It doesn't have to be experimentation, but that's kind of how I was picturing the governance Git book. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe we should have a look at it. I mean, I'm kind of aware of what they've been doing, and it wouldn't hurt to include, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got no preconceptions about this. Um, so, I mean, if you think it's relevant to... Uh, to, I suppose the ad tissue for the Governance Guild book is, is capturing our uh, knowledge IP, and I suppose across the community IP, yeah? So... If that's already being done, then, or if that's they're doing something different, if they're looking at decision making tools, not should the Git book be more about um, what has been decided or what's been ideated? What do people think? Yeah, good question. Um, in my mind, the ideation leads into later decisions. So, for example, this research. Uh, could feed into potential experiments if if the research shows like well tool x is uh, really bad and tool y is probably very nice mm. it's safe to assume that would then feed into experimentation with tool y rather than x let's say um that being said if if the purpose of the governance gitbook is to purely capture um experiments and the results yeah then maybe the ideation or, or research rather uh, is is not of it I don't know, now you're talking about it, it's, you know, it feels like it could be, especially because of the way that it leads to experimentation. I mean, maybe we should leave it as an action item for me to have a look at it and just try and see if it fits. I'm trying to come up with like an overall structure for the Git, for that Git book. Would that make sense? And maybe bring it back to next meeting. Yeah. Okay. We should do that. I mean, the, I mean, the interesting thing here, I suppose, it feeds into more discussions elsewhere, like with Felix and also supervisory council, and you know what what's happening in the ambassador program. And I suppose what is that issue? And I think you touched on it a little bit, Peter. Is you know when do you stop thinking about something and when do you start deciding something? Yeah. And I think that's where the archive comes in because the archive ideally should capture. Uh, what has been decided, you know, and document the history of that kind of, if you like, the thought process of the um, singularity net governance. Um, so, and all that is related to decision making accountability as well, you know, and yeah. So, but you think, Vanessa, that there could be the, the, the part of the thinking about that might need to be included as well then yeah mm, yeah maybe okay yeah okay i don't know has anybody else got any opinions on that or should we move on mm -hmm. 
well, from my side, I would say rather have too much background information and too little, but yeah. yeah that's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, we'll, we'll, right. just, we'll just put it out there. I mean, it's just the aim here of, from the archive perspective, is is just to um, to ensure you know that that things are being captured and in a timely and relevant way. And uh, you know, so that that is as far as it goes. We're not you know what what people do in their governance thinking is really you know more about their autonomy you know so it's not really so it's really like providing a service really that's like I, that's the way i see it i mean maybe there's differences of that but shall we move on from there and go on to the development issues um we the first one in order is um meeting summary tool tech support Um, oh, I still need to create that page um, where the people create the issues. Uh, I still need to add that feature that points them to Onyeka. Right. Okay. So we have an issue template, and then that would be um, yeah. if you wanted to raise an issue of concern about technical support, then the idea is to include a redirection to Anika, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I can, I think I, we can point, if it's okay with him, add his uh, Discord handle to the page itself and maybe on the template itself as well. Okay. Can you just post a link to the template so I can just uh, share the screen share that? Okay, all the sick. Yes, the templates. Just so that people can see what we're talking about. Okay, great. Thanks, um, Andre. Um, okay, what we're discussing here. Yeah, I thought I thought this was so. This is where you go to. Uh, yeah, raise it's it. actually the second one is maybe the better one. So okay. the this is where you go to look at the issues and where you can create a new issue. And if you That's... create a new issue, then it takes you to that other page. Okay, so you have open issues, and the idea in the if I create a new issue here, then the idea is that this should be referred. There should be some further onwards reference to uh oh sorry to um Anika as support, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if people um and on the other page as well. And on this page as well. So, so there's some sort of information here at the top. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's great. Um so that's still just to be done, but um, yes, it, it's good to demonstrate how what our intentions are. Just here, yeah. yeah. Are there any questions about issue management or this issue development? So that's an action item for you, Andre. Yeah, to like work out how to refer them to Onika as needed. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I've I've made a note of adding that. I just haven't. Um, okay. that is next on my list. Okay, you're capturing the action items, aren't you? Necessarily, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's no. a, yeah. So, oh, oh no. What do you want as a due date for that, Andre? <laughs> do you want to bring it to the uh, next meeting? Or? Yeah, our next meeting is fine. Nice. Yeah. All right. You can't, you can't escape, Andre. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, but you know, for the purpose of the recording, this is the issues um, process and development that we are developing, and. Um, so this what we what we just discussed in was some tweaks to the archive tool issue template, um, which is. Can I just issue. say before we go on, we've got a couple of new people with us today, um, SA and Duke, and I'm just going to yeah. say welcome. And if you've got any questions at any point, just interject. Yeah. Just ask. 
And just to recap for poor people who may have arrived a little bit later, the way that we run the meeting is through a kind of stand up of a GitHub project board or a project board, like or a Kanban board. And we go through each issue and we speak to each issue. So that's what we're doing now. Um, and we're currently talking about development issues. Um, so the next one is tool development, which is the standard tool development um, issue, Andre, isn't it? So at the very bottom, I've added the updates I did. So I added a new page where when I can stand and we can see the status of all the summaries. Right. Okay. So so look at the... And it also yeah, it creates a CSV. That's, inter that's interesting. I've got to say how brilliant that is. It's yeah, just really helpful. That is really helpful because it shows you the um so see so also this is this is this information aggregated from the database, uh Andre. It's updated yeah, it's every time someone adds a missing summary, it looks at the database. So if if one of those missing summaries were updated, then it will mm. update this CSV to reflect that. But it only mm. updates every time someone adds a missing summary. So the data is coming, so it goes to the database, it checks that in the database, and then you're outputting from the database to the CSV file. And the CSV, yes. does it, or do you commit it by hand to the, the data here, or is it? No, it's, uh, it's the tool. So in the tool, there's a special page where we add missing summaries, and it shows the status of all summaries. Maybe we should yeah. screen share that just for the video. It's yeah, quite cool. Um, do you want to have? I think yeah, you will have access, Stephen. I can mm -hmm. just drop a link quick. Yeah, if you drop a if, link, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, just just for status of summary. Oh, okay, that's the tool again, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so missing summaries are. Oh my God, it's the archival work group. Oh no, oh that's been done. Has that been done or not? <laughs> I, 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 so, you know, so. Are they need needs to be archived? Is that yeah, so? so that's, they... that's ones that people have submitted that I haven't yet clicked the button to say yes. It's... Ah, right, okay. And then these are the archive summaries. And yeah. also, if you were to go to submit meeting summary, yeah, at the top, yeah, and click on it, yeah. No, the at the very what? top navigation. Uh, yeah, summaries, yeah, yeah. summaries. Uh. No, submit meeting summary. Okay. That's it. And if you just pick a work group, any work group, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, archival, why not? Yeah, um, if you want. Then, oh, there you go. Okay, the little delay. then what's quite nice is that you can see in the date drop in the um date drop down at the top, you can see which ones have been archived and which ones haven't. No, not that date drop. The the one at the top left. Yeah. Top left. This one here? Or no. Yeah. Top left. Like oh, right, right oh, to oh, the top. Oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see. So you see we can see which ones have been archived. Now, actually, yeah, those October ones, I've added them manually. So we probably need to remove those, Andre, completely. Yeah. Okay. The 8th of October. But yeah, that's a side issue. But yeah, so, do you see how when that was an issue before where you couldn't tell till you looked whether something had already been archived, but now you can, which is ace. Okay. Is that a Discord name using there? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, that's really good. Great work. And um right, so go back to tool development. Um that's the so a lot of enhancements yeah. to the summaries. And you've ex you've also developed an export for the data in the CSV format. Um, yeah. Do you want to say, yeah, well, I don't want to read and out then, what you've written here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just added some extra templates. And there's an automation now that I added. So if people mark action items as done or agenda items as done, then it, will, it won't show up again, but only after we archived it. So we will archive when it was done right and then if they load the next meeting it won't show up again because it's done okay cool okay so we'll well there's a work in progress but i think that's uh 
particularly interesting the use of data there because that might come up again you know so how we're using our data um is there anything else you want to say on that andre as we move on to the next issue i think that's it yep. any, any questions yeah. from people on tool development we're here to answer your questions if you're not <laughs> i know this could be seem a bit overwhelming at first but uh if you've got any questions on tool development Oh, actually, I did have one on that whole thing, Andre, of um, meeting um, action items being carried over. What I'm doing when I'm documenting a meeting, which I think is quite cool, is when it pops up, you know, something that wasn't done, if it has been done in the next meeting, I'm just adding a note to it and then saying done. And it's just quite a nice way of recording what was actually done to finish it off rather than just leaving it as it was or just saying done so it disappears and i'm just thinking we probably need to show people that because it's a really good way of managing your action items i think yeah um where do you oh. add the note what where, where do you add that note well in the... when you get a new meeting summer i'm just in the middle of writing one now so you probably can't see it because i haven't submitted yeah. it yet. but um the one i'm writing for this meeting some of the action items obviously appear again from the yes. last meeting and what i'm doing is adding a note to the end of it to say what was done and then going to done oh okay okay yeah yeah that's good yeah so you've got a record of how it was closed which I think is useful. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. That's okay. something we, we can, yeah, that, that does sound useful. And also we can review that as we go forward. Okay, moving on to the UBIO tool development. Um, what are the updates on that that we have? Thank you. Anika, you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Can you guys hear me? Is it about uh, tool development? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a bit you're a bit faint. Go ahead. Okay, is it is it better now? Yeah, it's better, yeah. Can hear you a little bit better, yeah. All right, so it's on tool development. Yeah. So last week I was speaking with Vani and we actually encountered an issue when a member of the onboarding work group um, tried using the tool. So there's an issue that I would love us to deliberate on. Like in a scenario whereby a new member is assigned the task to um to take the meeting notes and isn't familiar with the process thereby making mistakes. How do we create a platform for comments, like separate comments, whereby members can just come and comment on that particular note, then the uh, member that assigned the tags can later check the comments and edit it, and edit the notes to align with what was actually said in the meeting. So is, okay. is it possible that we create a section for comments during in the tool before the note is actually being submitted. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can go on. Go on. Go on, on uh, Andres, uh, Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, I'm definitely gonna think about it. I think that it actually might be possible, but uh, it's I don't know when it will be available. But I'll definitely start planning and working on it. And I can see it being a. It can definitely be helpful to add something like that. Is that like informal comments per meeting? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah I think I, I'm thinking that it's like so that the the person who is actually documenting can then go back and change it in accordance to the comments rather than somebody having to create another meeting summary and then there's confusion about which is the the accurate one or whatever. Right. Okay. 
But yeah, on you, Cam, I'm thinking, could you add back to the tool issues? We have the tool list of issues here. Right. Because so, that's the best way to track it, I guess. Yeah. Um, sort of enables Andre to prioritize. If you can create, that's a good use case, actually, um, Anika. If you can create an issue here and what you just said. I'll so, that. yeah, that'd be really great. Yeah. So that we can, that can go into mm. our issue. Also, sorry. Yeah, go on. Also, um, in a scenario where they're going to export the so, um, meeting meeting notes. The comments won't be in the meeting notes. Is that is that possible, Andre? So when when you export, you don't want the comments in. I can. Yes, you don't want the yeah, yeah. Just... yeah, 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 yeah. That's possible, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's possible. That's just going to be. You're just going to oh. have to tweak the. Well, you just have to tweak the parameters of the export, wouldn't you, Andre? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep the comments separate, like a separate thing. Yeah. From... So can you, all right, all right, cool. maybe if you could add that as um, a note to the issue, uh, Anika, just to confirm what we just said. So um, maybe so we don't forget, <laughs> because that's a, yeah, a good point. So the comments won't necessarily, fit, won't, don't, don't need to turn up on the meeting summary. So, okay. I'll do that. Yeah, do great. That. That's great. Okay, if there's no more questions on tool development, February, I'll move on to the issue that we were moving on to, which is EBO's tool development. The background EBO's tool development is related to the development of AI tools, um, or um to interpret the data to take the data set of that we're creating and then to run that through an ai tool um so again andre do you have any updates on this um we last time we spoke he he already looked at the git book at the because I, I i gave him the two sources of the data the mm. Git book and the api okay and then I explained to him that the API still doesn't have some of the backlog, but it, it all the new summaries get will be available on the API. The Gitbook has all the backlog and current archived. So yeah. and then he said he still needs to test the API and uh yeah, that's. I think that was the last time we spoke. So, is it a question of what data sample to start with? You know, so if you're going to set yeah. up, so your proof of proof of concept, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Once he has access to both sources, I think he would we'll do a proof start, of concept. So yeah, start experimenting. Okay. Of, it might be useful if he can just provide. I mean, I don't want to sort of dictate what he how he works, but yeah, if if he can confirm that he has access to, let's say, some data set, either in Markdown in the Git book or through the yeah. API by the API people here, you mean the API to the database? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. Um, Remind me what the name of the database is. It's a JavaScript database, is that right? Or yeah, it's it lives on Superbase. Yeah, Superbase. But... Yeah, super, yep. so Superbase database. So um, once he has access to that through an API, then he should be able to draw down that data. Well, presumably he might draw down the data. He wouldn't. He wouldn't access a live API, would he? He would draw. He would take a sample. No, I think you'll, you'll just use the API. Oh, the API. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. Uh, yeah, maybe. that's, that's yeah. quite interesting. I'm, I'm, the only concern there is um, uh, performance and if it, you know, that's what I'm thinking. But I yeah, suppose that's, yeah. that's, that's, his, that's his, that's his, that's what we'll be able to judge. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah so if he can, well, if, even if the person, if he can confirm access to those, to those data sets. Yes, and yeah. As a minimum, it doesn't even have to be anything sophisticated, Andre. It can just be like a, 
um, like a test query using the like a uh, you know like a asking a question on a very simple question like how many meetings are there or something like that you know that kind of thing would be useful. Yeah. Um, but I, again, I'm not. I don't want to prejudge um, how he's working. But yeah, so that's in progress. Um, when do you expect feedback from him, Andre? Uh, I'm gonna. I'll message him today. Okay. And, and just tell him uh, it's because it's close to end of the month. Yeah. And so, he did create a repo as well, but the the repo is still empty. Okay. Uh, maybe he's still planning. That's the... kind of, yeah, I suppose that's kind of under, uh, presumably he doesn't want to commit until he's got something completed in on the repo. Yeah. yeah. Andre, when you talk to him, could you just ask him to update the issue so that if he's not here in a meeting, we still have yes. his, his words on what he's up to? Okay. Yeah, okay. that would be useful. Yeah. Would we have to create a new issue? Is this monthly issues we're creating for UBA? So it'd be one for March. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Haven't we already got it? I think we might. Um, no. No, oh, no, no, I'm imagining no. it. Sorry. Just as a side note, you know, yeah. so as we're coming towards the end of the month. Okay. okay. Um, the, okay, this is me, so which I haven't done. <laughs> um, but I think you asked Andre to do this, didn't you, as well, Vanessa? But the oh, yes. I, I mean, to be honest, Andre, I, I will try. Don't I would try and find time as well yeah. to do this. But um, I did. I actually did do it. Uh, but I think we need to wait forty-eight hours before we start seeing something. Oh, did you? Did you, what, yeah, what, yeah. what? Did you use your own Google account? I created a new Gmail account. Right. It's called Snet Archive or wg and work. you and you managed to work out how to set up the <laughs> yeah 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 it's quite clunky yeah uh, is it yeah. or is it or is it really simple it's a, you copy a code into well you install a integration in gitbook and then you copy that google code into yeah. a field yeah and then i hopefully gitbook does what it needs to do uh they need to add that code to the pages Okay. So I think that's why we have to wait a little bit. I don't you know how they do it. If everyone here can do me a favour and go to the, this is the SNET git book, isn't it? The archive git book. Yeah, yeah. And if everyone here can go to the git book and just click on something, that would be helpful because then we could, it should show up on our analytics, shouldn't it, Andre? You know, so yep. the analytics will identify things like what pages have been viewed, uh, where people have come from, that kind of thing, yeah? So, okay, so we can look at that next time and hopefully we'll see some analytic data. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'll check in in two days' time. If I don't see anything, then I'll try and figure out what is wrong. But I'm pretty sure it should work. Okay. Does that make you happy, Vanessa? Ecstatic. Great. Thank you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now on to um, community engagement issues. There's the labels here. And the first ones are these, a lot of these are bounties. Um, forgive me if I don't recognize the usernames here. So, this asset on this one, this is. Oh, this is Slate. Yeah. Slate, sorry, a bounty for meeting publicity. Is Slate here? Or... Don't think he's here, no. So I can give a quick update that um, he had a bit of an issue that he's not got permissions to post links in some of the main Discord channels. So he's approached um, Peter to get that sorted. I don't know if you got that, Peter, did you? Oh, you gave him. Nice one. Yeah, so... In future, he should be able to go ahead. So he did post something in the archives channel, uh, archives work group channel in Discord. Um, I don't know if you can, can you screen share that, Stephen, or do you want me to? Um, just so we can see what what he's done. We had we had a conversation about what kinds of things he might put in a meeting summary. Sorry, 
a meeting publicity thing. And um, um, he's basically it, done what we said, and he's going to do that for the next couple of meetings as well. But I kind of want to acknowledge that there's quite a few people here who've not been before. So can I ask, did you come because you saw Slate's post or did you just see it on the calendar or what? Like Vasu, I know you've been once before. Um, Ekimini Samuel, where did you see it? And I know Essie and Sucre, you're here because you're working on bounties. But yeah, it kind of seems to be working a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, we have evidence here of like Slate has posted in our Discord. Has he has he posted elsewhere as well? Than us, no, because he didn't have permissions until just now. Ah, right. Recently, okay. so sorry, sorry yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so and he kind of like so it's posting. Did he draft this himself and everything? He did. That? He did. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's cool. I can put the link to it in Discord if people haven't seen it. But um, <laughs> blimey, where's it gone? Yeah. Here we go. So it's also maybe people could thumbs up that or interact with that, but um, yeah, that'd so, be nice actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you just interact with this. Um, we are just starting trying to expand out. Oh, just checking the comments. Who? Oh, oh um, right, he ar ar archived that. Oh know. God, so I thought I assumed that he had archive channel access because everyone does. Okay. Um, do we need to think about which? You can't, so you can't just approve him for every every channel. It has to be done individually. That's a bugger. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> most links in general. Um, but it, since it wasn't working for him, it, I think he's uh, his link had embedded content. Mm. Yes. That's, uh, yes. Uh, oh, is is it the embedded content? Okay. That needs per channel um, access. Right. I I get you. Yeah. Okay, but it's oh, working. So, oh, well, that's great. Yeah, but it's work. It's working now in the archive. You know, so but uh, yeah, as again, if people can interact with this, and we 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 can maybe get some momentum going on this, and try to be a bit more um interactive with people. Yeah, um. So that's that's good on that one. I'll unless so any other comments. I'll move on to the next bounty, which is um. The Samika. Yeah. Okay, the bounty for general Ar general archives publicity. Is Amika here? Do you want to speak to this Amika? Oh, I think he might have dropped off. I see. He has a few connection issues. Oh no, you're there. Go for it. <laughs> Unless you have you got connection. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I spoke with Vanny. So the issue was the Google Analytics. So I will be able to know when people actually interact with the archives kit for right. Facebook. So that was why I haven't really started anything. So yeah. For... yeah, I have to apologize for that, Aniki, okay. because of that, that was. Um... But now Andre, well, we just spoke to that in the, when Andre talked about, because he's set up now the analytics. So we should know, as Andre says, in 48 hours. Um, yeah. but, but once you have that data, would that be, then you can start to see um, the extent of the, well, the needs for publicity. Is that what you're saying, Anika? No, it's more like yeah. that Yuki is going to be doing publicity and we're going to see if it's working. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I suppose because depending on what you're doing for publicity, I'm not, you know, then, you know, so I suppose we'll see what audiences, what click through we're getting from different parts of the world or and also particularly what may be interesting is what peer pages people are going to um as well so that's great so um, is there any other updates or comments on uh the bounty or or on publicity in relation to the archives do you, is there anything else we can do 
on this or not doing or doing well? Okay. For now, none. Just the Google Analytics. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, the next one is Thank you. mentorship of bounty holders. This is you, Vanessa. Yeah, just scroll to the but I've just logged what I've done. So we've got a record of it. Right. Okay. But there's so, nothing really to say. It's kind of yeah. It's, it's kind done. of written there if people want to read that. The so yeah, a lot of work progressing um and um interaction on what needs to be done for tweaking to support. I mean, this is all good because, you know, it's kind of, we're trying, we're expanding out as we start, we originally started as just the three of us, didn't we? And so it's really great to have more people involved. And I um, suppose what this does as well is it gives us an idea of how much mentorship is needed when somebody comes on to do a bounty. Cause I think yeah. there's a bit of a learning curve because we're the only work group that uses a GitHub board and so on, but so it's yeah. just being aware of it. Yeah, I mean, we welcome feedback. I mean, we know there's, I mean, the way, the way it's kind of supposed to be challenging in a way because the, because we're using open source tools. But I would encourage everyone here not to just to be patient with us. And we will try and assist people, you know, to help to understand how to use these tools. And that can be, that, that would be a valuable skill as well. I mean, one thing one thing that occurs to me is new people in this meeting today, stick your hand up if you would feel like you'd like a short session to get you more familiar with the board, or do you feel like it's kind of self-explanatory and you're getting there by using it? I can't see hands up, so you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> I can't see any. Do, 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 there, do. there is one. Oh, is there? Yeah. Duke's got his hand up. All right, well, we can try and do that. Duke, if we... yeah, let let's do that via DM, and we'll try and find a time to just sit down yeah. with you and run through it. I mean, if you give me some notice, I can join in with that as well, Vanessa. If, if you need me, um, I'm kind of thinking you were going to do it, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You said have a meeting. Yeah. I yeah yeah. So again, we can take people through the basics of GitHub, a GitHub board issues how to add comments this kind of thing and why we do that as well um i mean uh, take this issue for example we have a label we have a status a due date the budget in what month the budget comes out of and that kind of thing and there's an all the reason why we do this is a complete audit trial just check in chat again um amika yeah yeah absolutely if you take part as well um i mean the more we work together on this the the more hopefully the more momentum and the more skill set we can build up in the ambassador program on github and open source tools um so i'd be quite given again given some notice if you know if you if you dm vanessa and then i i can yeah. well i'll tell you what i'll dm used to and maybe create a group chat with you and Stephen, and then you can. Yeah. Should we try and aim to get do it before the next meeting on the sixth of? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you probably, I certainly could be by with some time in the next two weeks, but be, with a little bit of notice, a few days' notice, maybe, and then, um, like a an hour session or something, and the way I, if you've got GitHub accounts, Anika and Duke, then. Um, we're ready to go we can play around with some with some issues and things you know so that's that's fine okay that's great um i'll move on to the last issue on the community engagement which is the archives outreach to the singularity net ecosystem um vanessa there was some interaction with the supervisory council Yeah, um, well, obviously we met with them back at the end of January and we're just having ongoing discussions about um, exactly what they need. So um, I posted a little 
comment to them today just to try and say we because us three um Stephen Andre and I met and kind of tried to thrash out what we could offer and um mm. yeah we've posted that to them and just wait to hear back I guess but that is specifically to the supervisory council um outreach to other parts of the ecosystem I haven't really done yet but mm. I'll aim to bring something to um the next meeting with some ideas i'm thinking i mean to be honest if anybody's got any particular connections in other parts of the, the ecosystem let me know and maybe we'll look at you know what we could do but what we're looking at is kind of saying well we've got the meeting summary tool we've got processes we've got ideas for how you can manage documentation are you interested in us working with you to develop something so yeah that's all really uh, sorry, this responding to Duke. Can you drop your um GitHub name in chat? Um, I'll add you. Um, oh, maybe I saw that. Yeah. So, Peter, your view on pretty much all connections? Is that all connections across the ecosystem for? Of course it is. Peter knows everyone. Oh, he does. Yeah, he's the man to know, obviously. <laughs> it's not about knowing. I mean, <laughs> part of my work as well, right? Yeah. I mean, I wonder, Peter, would it be... I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm just thinking, should I have a chat with you and see if you know anything about who who you think maybe we should prioritise or shall I just look at... I'll just look into it and see what... Yeah, I should wish. I mean... Um... That's also the matter most. So indirectly, there's a ton yeah. of in there yeah. as well. Yeah, mm. that's good. I mean, I'm certainly thinking that um, deep funding focus group might be something that there might be something there. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I might bob you a DM before the next meeting and just go, yeah, what do you think of, of this? Yeah, I mean, in general, I suppose the. The kind of theme here is it's kind of related a little bit to what we were discussing earlier on um governance gitbook a little bit where um it's really about what kind of if you if you see the singularity net and back archive coming out of the ambassadors program it's more you know we're now able to provide maybe more of a broader service if you like you know because we've developed you know, with credit to Andre and Vanessa, we develop a process and 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 tool development which can help uh, anyone in the singularity net ecosystem with document management, with archiving, and with knowledge management as well. And you know, yeah, you know, so it's really just you know networking on that, making people aware that we could do that, or and then I suppose there's the question, Peter, or should we do that kind of thing and how we you know yeah how people use these kind of tools in singularity now, i suppose yeah fair um i think the biggest portion there is gonna be convincing them that the service offering is something they that's good for them yeah absolutely and i, I again i think probably the best uh yeah i'm not always good at this but because i'm not always that diplomatic but 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 the best is to sort of like you know take an easy approach so to try and just demonstrate to show not tell i suppose that's my mm -hmm. view so i think this issue crosses over a little bit with onyika's work on sort of general archives publicity i don't know if you want to say anything to that onyika All right. I am. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. So I spoke with Vanny on um, publicizing the tool to get collaborations from other ecosystem projects, other projects outside our ecosystem, in a scenario whereby they actually like our tool and they like the way the process of archiving and maybe they would like to collaborate with us 
on using two. I don't know if it's possible. Not just yes. getting just our within our ecosystem, but outside our ecosystem. Well, yeah, that's um I mean it's something we have done already well, certainly in this in respect of QA DAO, I suppose, and you know, we've done it in um We've done very similar work to what we've done in Singular IT in, in, in Project Catalyst. Um, so um, I suppose the question, if we were going to use these tools in any other context, is our capacity, I suppose, and what people people's expectations. What do you think, Vanessa? Yeah, yeah, I think it is a little bit about, about that. Yeah. Yeah. But but I've got an open mind, and um, I'm sure you have in us as well. So and again, I, I I'm not going to speak for you, Andre, but I, it is a lot of it. We are very. Um, it does take quite a lot to manage all this. <laughs> so um, yeah, it really is going to depend on our capacity. But we 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 are, we are certainly open to. Um, applying this method and testing this method and refining it on other in other contexts and now we're getting new people involved you know it's great to see people here then maybe that helps with the capacity issue in the long run yeah and i suppose there's a kind of a virtuous feedback is like amika is like if we do use it in a different ecosystems or different contexts then that helps everyone because we discover new ways of working, frankly, and we, you know, that's I, I, I don't know what you think, Vanessa, but we when when we've worked in different situations, you always, you know, learn something new from how people are working. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so the nature of decentralized tools, yeah. really, isn't it? So if you've got something, you've got an idea, and you can just let us know. And we can maybe take that offline. Yeah, we'll move on from. All right, all right. Cool. Cool. Okay, the archive Git book backlog part two. Part one was um, a little section at the beginning. Part two, w what it was on hold because, um, yeah of uh, andre you've done you've now completed this is that right a meeting template for the backlog no i still need to build that um, right yeah so it will be a special kind of way to add it because we don't want to yeah because it's already in the git book and it's we don't want to send a discord message for them as well because it's all meetings. I mean, is this? I mean, because I I did preface this by saying, do we have the capacity? Do you have the capacity to do this? You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I okay. can. I wanted to. Oh, this. I can either do it myself, or I can build something where Vanessa can help me to into them i mean i can well i think we you we can help you with entering the data if you get yeah, yeah, well yeah. I, I don't think we should expect you we we should well i know we yeah. you know it's not a perfect world is it andre but the you know we shouldn't really expect you to be entering data if we can avoid that you know so if we can do up yeah. get out get other people to do that um so, I, I just need to build that thing that you guys can help yeah. Yeah. The yeah. data. Shall we have a chat about that outside the meeting, Andre, and try and get that if yeah. you need any input? And what I'm thinking is once that template is there, that could almost be a bounty. Yeah. Maybe. And just for again, from an educational perspective or from what people wondering what this is we're talking about here. Um the, when we started the archive, the archive work group started about it about a year into the program is that right peter i think i can't remember it was, it was march april um last year and um the actual ambassador program started almost a year before that 
And so there is a backlog, you know, and, you know, there's always been a, you know, a bit of a kind of put, put that off. But with the advent of the meeting templates, it occurred to us that it'd, it'd be good to have uh, the entire archive, including the backlog, in a database format. Uh, why? And the reason why we would want to do that is that we could then query the data, either through a database or through AI, like an LLM. So that's the kind of medium to long-term aim. So, for example, we could ask questions about what happened in, you know, what town hall meetings was this topic discussed or something like that, that kind of question, which if you ask that question now, you'd have to go through that manually. Um, and the idea is, is to be able to just query that for a question and answer. Yeah, so that's why we're doing that. And I'll move on from there. But thanks, Andre. Yeah. Okay, The um, we're now on to topics related directly to the archive. Um, so a lot of these are kind of administrative and sort of budgeting issues. Um, we have an issue here for still open for quarter four archive budget. Yeah, it just needs submitted. But, oh, Andre, didn't you submit it already? Yes. Yeah. Yes, submit, so uh, we can, we can take that off as done, can't we? Yep. It actually closed this issue, though. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, just for the recording, what we were waiting for is for me to manually do the archive summaries for November and December, because we decided it would make sense to start using the summaries tool in January as a brand new year. So I did have those hanging over my head for quite a while and did them close the issues. So now we're able to submit that funding request and Andre's done that. This could be, should this just be assigned to you, really? Um, no, I think it should have been either for... you or Andre. It shouldn't be me because I don't submit funding requests. Okay, I'll leave that there. So it should, yeah, it, yeah. But there's no budget on that. Um, yeah, I suppose. I'm just thinking about who we talk. We had discussions elsewhere about who does what, who's done what. So I was thinking that really has been, been mainly well, it's you and Andre, really. So, no, no, because it's not about this. It, what this issue is about is the actual budget and the submitting of a fund request. Right. Quarter four. So under normal circumstances, that would have been you, but yeah. Andre was looking at it and we just went, let's, you know, should you do it? Yeah, just do it now. Okay. So. Yeah. Again, for the purposes of people, this is a, an issue that when we close an issue, we would check, for example, who's data like, is the assignees correct? The reason why we would check that is so that we, we could check who's done what in the future. Also, we would look at um, the cost, uh, if there was a cost associated with this one, there's no cost, there's no budget for doing budgeting. Um, and then the milestone is when any cost would come out of. So this would come out in December, but there's no cost, but you know, that's what it would come out of. And then we would just go to here, any comments, we put any final comments in here, and then we just close the issue here like that. So I just close it and then that's closed. And that issue would then disappear off the project board. Um, it will maybe take a few seconds, but it'll come off here and go, go elsewhere. Okay, moving on to the correction and maintenance of monthly archive records. Again, this is you, Vanessa. Sorry. Um, shouldn't this be... Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Yeah, Andre has... Um created a really helpful markdown template which is mentioned in the comment above so that's all done i'm planning to start work on it towards the right at the end of february basically but um the only comment i had is that due to the budget fitting you know the the way that people work group leads submit a budget and then it might need to be fitted per percentage in percentage terms 
Um, so yeah, we might need to move part of this work to quarter two. But having said that, with the current price of AGIX, we might not need to. So if everyone's all right with it, we'll just manage it according to um, what the price of AGIX looks like and what we've got in the budget. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not really familiar with budget issues, but there, there is some, some uncertainty about whether we have sufficient budget, is that? No, not really, because the price has gone up so much. And, okay, okay. You know, and also just because um, we actually were, we could pretty much manage to do what we wanted to do on what we were getting if we just put a few things into quarter two instead. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm just saying that I'll, I'll look at, what needs to be done on that um, process of updating previous meeting summaries so that they actually match what the tool produces. Okay. It's going to be quite a long piece of work, but yeah. Cool. Okay, thanks for update on that. And moving on to, this is the, um, again, another budget issue, but this is for quarter one. That's just placed there to, well, we're coming up to, that'll be the end of March, so that'll be closing down, won't it, for us? Yeah, so that's the budget issue that I was talking about before. Um, yeah. I think may maybe we just need to tidy that up in the Treasury meeting on Thursday. Because what happened, wh where we were at is that TiVo requested that certain um, work groups cut their budget by however much. And I think we're fine with doing that, but it's just we don't necessarily want to have to say what we're going to cut or what we're going to move because it just depends how the work goes. So I think okay. it would be fair enough to just say, look, yes, we agreed to cut our budget, but we're not gonna we're not gonna decide in advance what we're gonna cut and what work. I mean, for me, what is prioritized is anybody who's working to a bounty, mm. that money is kind of earmarked and ring fenced. And yeah. then whatever else. We just have to see how far we get with the work we wanted to do in this quarter and what we can push to quarter two. That's all. Yeah. So the idea is to cut our cloth to what we're given, I suppose, and then to see what the yeah. um, if we do receive less money, to see what the impact will have it after the event, really, I suppose. <laughs> okay, um, so let's move on to another bounty. Bounty for tracing missing meeting summaries. Essie, is that one? Essie's done an update here. Would you like to speak to this, Essie? If Essie's here, I'm not sure. No, she is. Are you able to come off mute? And... Maybe not. Okay, so I'll, I'll just speak to you. If, you. if you correct me if I'm wrong, I said, but you, you've got the, there's the comments here. The missing meeting summaries have been updated. Um, and you're going to reach out to Judith. Do you want to add anything to that? Or should I just leave it as the comment? I think that is the state of play. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's cool. And you'll see the evidence of the work that's been done when we get to the archive Git book issues for January and February. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so moving on to, all oh, right, this is another tag, tax, I'm just clicking my tag, tag taxonomy brief of concept part one. It's a bit of a mouthful. As the, yeah, so. This Vanessa, this was discussed and agreed in seventh of February. Yeah, and basically the time scale is we need to start it kind of mid March because the idea is it carries over to quarter two. The first bit is some training for people who are interested. We're going to recruit three people, and we don't want there to be a massive gap between them getting trained and them actually doing the work. So, yeah, you want to look at the plan or not? Um, I mean, we looked at it last meeting, didn't we, and agreed it. So, if you want to, yeah, could yeah, do. just just for um, again for people who are not familiar with what what we do. This is a plan to go through the archive and tag or to work out a tag taxonomy. Is that right? 
um, Vanessa? So yeah, pretty much. And the first bit of it is kind of recruiting, training, and getting people ready to do it. So that's what we aim to do in this quarter. Okay. Then in uh, quarter two, people will actually be doing the tagging. So we'll be probably we'll do it as a bounty again on um, D work because people do look there. And what would that look like? Uh, what would a tag taxonomy look like? What what is it? What would a tag look like on? Um... Sorry, what do you mean look like? I'm just trying to think. You know, to uh, is it like um, categorizing information that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, we talked about this at quite a lot of length um, last meeting, so I'd refer people to the video. And okay, you know, I just. I don't know if we we haven't got that much time left in this meeting, so I don't know if we want to. Okay, I just I, I just I just wanted to cover the basics for people, but never mind. Okay, um, yeah. So basically, it's a work in progress to uh, organise a tag taxonomy of or to or to tag um, meetings with contextual information. Um, then we have issues related to um, Git books. These are administrative issues, um, which just record what progress has been made on archiving each month. That's right, isn't it, Vanessa? Yeah, that's right. So if you scroll down, you can see how SE has been logging which meetings have not submitted a summary but did appear in the um, calendar. Yeah. I don't know, Essie, if you want to come off mute and talk, say anything about this. I'm not sure if you are able to. No, I don't think she can come off mute. So, yeah, as you can see, most of the ones that haven't been submitted are kind of one off meetings with them um, around the sort of whole BGI event in Panama. So, um, this links in with one of the updates that Andre has made to the tool, which is to create um, a template for one-off meetings. And there's also town halls, which haven't been submitted yet, which I need to do. And again, Andre's created a template for town halls. So that enables us to tick off a lot of those. Yeah, it's really useful to see the information laid out like that. Um, so thanks for the work on that. Um, but you know, it kind of identifies what we what we need to what is outstanding. So that's really helpful. Um, and this, this, the same goes for each of these issues, February and March as well, Vanessa. Yeah, that's right. So I don't really do. I need to click nah. on these. No, okay. So yeah, okay. So that go takes us to the final uh, issue, which is um, bounty for. Come on. Bounty for uh, minor updates to the ambassador gear book. Um, this is Sukri. Sukri, sorry. Hey guys. Hello there. How are you doing? Hey. Uh, <laughs> good. I'm good. Uh, it's a bit <laughs> uh, Stephen, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time since I've spoken to you. It's good to hear from you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I had a few hustles um, doing this um, tax. I couldn't find the merge button on my end, which I communicated to Vanessa. So I don't yeah. know if the edits I, I made um, reflected in the git book. Um, also, there are some other tax, um, sorry, some other documents in the git book that needs to be updated. Um, for instance, the the new um, onboarding video, welcome video that we have, um, I couldn't upload that yet because we are making some changes to it. And wow. um, there's also a document that needs to be updated also. So, but it's still it's still in progress and um, this is the well. That's the document you're you working from, um, yeah? Okay, thanks. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I just display that people's something a little bit they do. 
Okay, thanks for the update. Um, oh, uh, before we move on, yeah, I've just looked, Sucre, yeah. and I've realised that there are changes that I need to approve, I think. Or I, I, I don't know if I do, actually. No, you should, ha you should be able to, but they're there. Yeah. That's all I can say, is they are okay. there. Um, so I just need to look around and see if it's me that needs to approve them or you. I is that the... Is that the git book or that's the ambassador's git book, yeah. And I can ah. see I can see Sucra's changes from February the twentieth yesterday. And I can't see why I guess they must have been incorporated actually. Let me what do you, tell me something that you one thing that you changed and I'll just see if I can see it. Um I changed um the budget requests for most of the work groups. Let's and then the up. links. Okay. Does no, it doesn't look like they are showing. Right. This that's just it's some kind of an approval issue because the changes are there. Right. So I'll put that as an action item for either me or Stephen to try and work out what the buggery is going on. I'm just trying to look at change requests for the ambassadors. Okay. Yeah. If you if you see like things in draft, there you can see. No, Sophia's February the twentieth. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so I should be able to merge those. Um, right. Yeah, so I, I I couldn't see this merge button. Yeah. That looks like I've merged. Let's just check again. Change requests. So the way it would work, yeah, yeah. So your changes are now merged in. Let's see if look. Yeah. They're now merged in. So, nice. Yeah. Okay. It's weird though why you don't see the merge button because you should have full permissions on it. But yeah, you we'll see. If we, we'll see if we can fix that. Okay, so that's a task. We need to check the permissions. I, I won't show them in this meeting because the security. Yeah. But the yeah. Obviously. Okay, but yeah, that it's good to, okay. to know that it works. We can see your change requests, um, and we can merge them in. Okay. So we just have to figure out why you can't do that yourself, or why how we can set that up so we can you can do that yourself. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. That's great. That's great. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so that brings the issues on the project board to a close. If there's missed anything or any other issues that people would like to raise. Uh, this is work issues, actually. If not, I'll stop the share and we can have a, I could stop recording. We could have an informal conversation, if you like, briefly. <laughs> so there's yes or no. Okay, well, I'll stop recording. <laughs>